We will be exploring the Basingstoke Town Trail, visiting various buildings and parks which have major historic significance in the town. We started off at the Willis Museum, which was originally Basingstoke's town hall during the 1800s. The building was designated the Willis Museum in 1931 and was curated by George Willis until 1970. The museum was open to document Basingstoke and what life is like in the town. In the museum, you'll find lots of interesting artefacts and exhibitions, including a scale model of a typical 1960s home. As you continue around the windy corridors, you gradually go back in time to see what life was like during the war. And even as far back as the 1700s when Basingstoke was a tiny market town. Lesser Market was a small indoor market located between Church Street and Wote Street near the top of town. The entrance to Lesser Market features fruit and vegetable artwork which dates back to 1864. The market was used for the sale of fruit and vegetables as well as fresh meat and dairy items until the market opened outside the Willis Museum more recently. The current marketplace has stalls selling novelty knickknacks and toys as well as fresh meat and vegetables and hot food. It's open every Wednesday and Saturday. We then headed back to the Willis Museum as we had arranged an interview with Jenny Stevens, who is the museum curator. Can you introduce yourself, please? I'm Jenny Stevens, and my job title is Area Community Curator North and Central. And what that means is that I'm the curator for the Willis Museum in Basingstoke, but also Andover Museum and the Museum of the Iron Age, and Aldershot Military Museum. So I actually cover three museums in North Hampshire. We walk down Woke Street, which is an old cobbled hill, to the Haymarket Theatre. It is an old Victorian building which hosts various shows throughout the year, including pantomimes and Christmas shows, as well as educational performances. Could you give us a brief timeline of the history of the museum? Well, the museum itself is actually very, very old in terms of having had a museum in Basingstoke. It was originally started by a man called George Willis, which is why the museum is named after him. And he actually started his own little museum. He was the local clock and watch maker and mender. And he was one of these guys, what well, he used to call an antiquarian, who was very interested in lots of different things. And he started to collect old objects. And then people started to catch on to this, so they would brought things back to him. It's like we've got a collection of Egyptian material that people actually, he never went to Egypt himself, but people who went there actually brought back and gave to him. So he actually started the museum himself sort of about 80 years ago. And then it eventually got taken over by the council. And then back in the 1980s, they decided to move the museum from its small um, premises around the corner into what used to be the town hall. So the building we're in now used to be Basingstoke's town hall many years ago when it was first built in the Victorian period. So we're now in the old bit that used to be the council offices effectively. Festival Place is located at the bottom of Woke Street and opened to the public in 2002. The huge complex is the 22nd largest shopping centre in the UK and there is a array of shops and restaurants as well as a cinema and a sports centre, a large bus station and a fountain area. A five minute walk away from the centre is East Rock Park. Has the town changed in recent times? If so, how? It's changed enormously. Um, many years ago it was a small market town, a bit like Andover, Romsey, places like that. that it was on the A303 or uh, the 303 or the old, what was the carriage route for the posts and things. So it would have actually just been a market town with people bringing their animals and livestock and goods into town to sell. But particularly after the Second World War, um, it was chosen as one of the expansion towns. Um, London had obviously been bombed heavily and a lot of people were made homeless. And rather than rehousing them in London, the decision was made to try and move them out into the countryside more. And basically, so it's one of the places chosen to take those people. 
So it's a massive expansion after the war, both in terms of housing and industrialisation, the building of the industrial estates and things like that. And that's also the roundabouts, because let's be honest, it was famous, we used to call it roundabout town when I was younger. And then really in the last few years, the biggest expansion has been in leisure and shopping industry. So obviously the building of Festival Place and the leisure park where Milestones Museum and, and the ice rink and things are. So particularly since you know, the sort of 1960s, there has been a huge expansion. Lots of our visitors, should we say, who are more mature uh, will go on and on about all the changes. Somebody even can remember when there used to be a dirt track running along out the back there rather than the road that's there now, which is quite spectacular to think about. East Rock Park was opened in the town during the 1960s, which is the time of the London overspill. It provides a place for families to relax during the summer months, with a vast amount of greenery and benches, as well as boats to hire and a small ice cream kiosk open between April and September every year. The Basingstoke Canal used to run through the park, and was used as a major method of transport into the town. The River Loddon still runs through the park to this day and flows north to join the River Thames near Reading. Another five minutes or so from Eastrop Park is the War Memorial Park, which is near the top of town. It was opened as a large open space to remember the fallen from the World War I. The park is a site of where Basingstoke Live, a free music festival, is held every summer. The Memorial Park has three large fields as well as a play area, a bandstand and a perimeter pathway. How can people find out more about the town's history? Well they can come and visit the museum, because there's obviously lots in here. We've got the story of Basingstoke and we've got stuff about archaeology on the top floor as well. We also sell lots of books that tell you about Basin Dead and Past and also the library's got a good collection of local history books. They can go online and Google Basin Stoke and Basin Stoke History, there's lots of material. But they can also join sort of one of the local clubs, there's Basin Stoke History Society for instance, that are very active and they look after um, things and they write lots of books. So if you're really keen, it's well worth having a look at one of the local societies, there's an archaeology society as well and finding out all that way, but often the best way is to come in, visit us first, and then get a book maybe, and start that way. For more information on the Basingstoke Town Trail, or Basingstoke and the surrounding area, go to www.basingstoke.gov.uk. <laughs>